Hello, I'm Andrew from Antigames, and today I have a quick tutorial for how to do gradient lighting effects in Game Maker. Um, these are going to be quick, rough tutorials for things that I, I struggled to figure out how to do, uh, had a hard time finding a solution for, and uh, hopefully they'll be of help to you. Um, all right, so here we've got a little tank game that I made, just a exercise game. Got a flat blue sky, some bullets, and randomly generated terrain, stuff like that. This is just an example project that I'm going to be adding some gradient lighting effects to. So here we go. I'm going to go into uh, the game here, and uh, the game object, controller object. We're going to declare a couple of variables in the create event, uh, destroy me and room gradient, uh, and then we are going to go to the draw event. I'm going to type out this code here. So if you have multiple rooms in your game, you'll want to start off with a switch event, uh, a switch statement rather, um, with each room changing the room gradient to equal a, a certain sprite. Okay, so this sprite is going to be called S gradient. If you had another room, it might be S gradient one. And at the end, we change room gradient to false to, to indicate if we didn't find the room in the switch statement, then we don't want a gradient at all. Okay, so now we're going to go down here to this if statement. If it's uh, room gradient is not false, then we're going to, this, this creates the gradient out of the sprite. And the destroy me variable is, is so we can destroy the sprite at the end of it so we don't get memory leaks. Uh, then we draw the sprite uh, stretched out um, to be the width and height of the room. Obviously, you can change this as required, but um, this is what I want the gradient to be stretched over the whole uh, whole room, entire room. So uh, we've got that. And at the end of a room, um, again, so we don't get memory leaks, if destroy me isn't undefined, then we are going to uh, destroy the sprite contained in the destroy me variable just so it doesn't, um, I'm pretty sure that can cause memory leaks if you don't destroy the sprite. So, all right, now we're going to create the sprite. We're going to change the width to one and the height to two, or th well, three. Um, and uh, now we'll stick with two because we'll just do a really, really simple gradient here uh, from one color to another. Might just do like a nice yellow in the sky, kind of a sunshiny color and uh, purple on the bottom, yeah. And then we're going to double click on the layer here and reduce the opacity down to like 20, 25. Um, and that's all you need to do to get a simple gradient. Of course, we need to name our sprite properly, S gradient. And then we're going to uh, play the game, uh, test the game and see what happens. Yeah, so S gradient, of course, is back here in that switch statement. Um, so that's all ready to go. That's everything we need to do. So here we go. As you can see, we've got this nice gradient uh, where we've got the sky was lighter, where we have the yellow block, and then it gets kind of darker and uh, not too much darker because we kind of did a lavender color, but um, to give you a better idea of what's going on, we are going to ramp up the opacity here to almost completely opaque. Go ahead and put black on the bottom and, and like a red on the top just to show you what's going on here so you can get an idea of how this works. Um, so we've got a, a linear gradient starting at the top all the way down to the other color at the bottom, and this is as basic as it gets two pixels with a linear gradient between them. Now I'll undo that. Um, and of course you can do a whole lot more with this uh, kind of these kind of gradients, this tiny, tiny little sprite than that. If you wanted one of the colors to be more opaque than the other, you'd create another layer, put that color on the new layer and adjust the opacity accordingly. So now that, that dark purple will be significantly more opaque than the yellow. So this won't look good, but um, just, yeah, now we have like this, you know, purple haze 
down here on the on the ground. Now it is good to remember that these the only blending going on here is opacity. So uh, everything, even the tank bullets and everything, will get colored by that purple haze. But that's why we generally keep things somewhat low opacity because otherwise they look kind of uh, foggy, hazy kind of color. Uh, you can also um, adjust the size of the sprite to have more colors horizontally. So now we have a two pixel by two pixel sprite. Um, and you can, let's just put some more colors in there. Um, blue, orange, yellow, purple, going to remove that one. And um, that will be, of course, distributed linear gradients. We've got yellow in that corner. We've got kind of the blue in that corner, purple in that corner, blue, etc. So we have kind of four quadrants with gradients in between. And there's, I'll crank up the opacity so you can actually see exactly what's going on. But there's a lot you can do with this. You can uh, add a few more pixels and really pinpoint areas where you want, you know, maybe there's a light and you can have a, a yellow gradient around that light to create um, the idea of, of light uh, emitting from, you know, from that lamp or candle or whatever. Um, we're going to change this back to just uh, kind of a taller uh, image, one pixel wide, but five tall. And you know, you could put different stripes of color. Uh, you have a lot of flexibility with this. And all you need to do is change the sprite up and you can do lots of cool effects like, like this, where we have these bands of color, you know, going across the whole image all the way down. Um, so now we're going to create some more gradients and we're going to actually have the game uh, randomly pick the gradient depending on a, a random number. Okay, so here's the same code down here but we've got another switch statement nested inside. Um, you can do this all sorts of different ways but uh, this we have a random uh, number selected here in the create event. And that random number determines one of three gradients that we'll be applying to the game. Uh, we just have to create those sprites. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this and change it up so we can, we can tell the difference between the gradients. Uh, I'll just, yeah, one by three. So you have a tremendous amount of flexibility with these kind of effects um, to be able to create a lot of different lighting effects. It, if you get to the point where you have a few too many pixels in the gradient sprite, then that starts to cause, you can kind of see the big blurry square pixels. So you don't want to get too many pixels, but you can get away with uh, a fair amount and have a lot of, uh, I, I have a, a room in my game that I'm working on that has a uh, above ground portion, which is a swamp area and underground portion, which is like this dark, uh, dingy kind of tunnel area. And you can change that up. The, the tunnel area has a lot of, um, a lot of lights in it. The uh, swamp area has some sunlight filtering through, um, also some dark areas. Uh, so, so you have a lot of flexibility with what you can do with this, uh, just depending on how many pixels you put in your gradient sprite and uh, what you do with color and opacity. So, so much flexibility and you don't really need to change up your code to do it, which is very handy. So here we go, uh, randomly selected one of the gradients here and I've got a button that lets me adjust the random number here. So re-randomize the number. So we've got all these different gradients tied to a random variable and you can do a lot of stuff with it. Obviously none of these things you ever want to do, uh, but uh, there you go. Hopefully that's helpful for you uh, in kind of creating uh, lighting effects and gradients in your game. And thanks for watching.